Hello and welcome back to our how to electrical videos. What we're going to do now in this video is steel wired armoured SWA and in particular how to make of an SWA end. So the tools that we need are two sets of grips, a junior axle and a knife. Let's look at the cable gland. As you can see here, it's in two parts. The gland, body and the locking nut. Also with the gland, you have the lock nut, the shroud and the banjo. First thing we need to do is to take our junior axle and in one hand holding the SWA cable we have to find our position of where we want our cable gland to go. So what I'm going to do is start cutting round the outer sheathing with the junior axle. You may start to hear that I'm actually cutting into the steel wired armory. Now what's important here when you're doing this, that you cut a groove into the armoring, but you don't actually go through the armoring. Once you have um, cut round through the outer insulation and made an indentation within, to, within the steel wired armoring, you're ready for the next stage. Take the knife, cutting away from me, I'm gonna remove the outer sheath. As you can see, I've got nice control over the knife and I gently slide the knife down the armor in and remove the outer sheath. As you can see now, the steel wire armoring has a little indentation all the way around. Every single strand has been cut into. So now we're at the stage where we can start removing the unwanted armoring. And we take a few strands at a time and we gently bend them back and forward and they snap off. The most important thing when we're doing this is to do it nice and gently. You shouldn't struggle when you come to do this part. It should come off nice and easily and we need to remove every single strand. It helps if you just do a few at a time and again nice easy motion back and forth. This seems to be um, what a lot of students struggle with when they initially start doing this for the first time. There is an act to it and that would come with practice so I'd practice this a few times. There we go. We have removed the armoring. So upon inspection we can see the armoring has been removed and none of the strands are spraying out and it's made a nice circle which would hopefully make a nice connection to the gland. So now, with the use of a knife, we take our shroud and we um, take the top of the shroud. Judge the distance by putting the shroud the opposite way over the armour in and basically marking it. And then, with the use of the knife, cutting, cutting the end off, like so. Then we can slip our shroud onto our SWA. You see a nice tight fit there. We can also put our gland locking nut on. 
At this stage, you can see how much of the inner sheath that we would like to remove. Being that the gland will fit on the cable eventually, like so, we can make a mark so the inner sheathing goes past the gland, providing extra protection on the inside of the gland. So we make a nice little mark, like so, and then again, carefully, with use of the knife, we can circle around the cable taking care not to cut through the cable and damaging our inner conductors. Once we've done that, we need to remove the inner sheathing. And again, with the use of a knife, nice and carefully, we can gently run our knife down, making a nice score Careful not to go through. So now I'm peeling this inner sheathing off where my conductors are. And nice and gently, I'm putting undue strain on the conductors. Sheathing is removed. Very important to have a little check all the way down to make sure you haven't gone through and scored the insulation of the conductors. And now we need to remove a small, about 30 mil, given that it's a 20 mil gland, section of uh, the outer sheathing. Again, use of the knife, very carefully cut round and then again use a knife. Remove. As you can see now, the last thing to do Given that the gland is going to tighten together onto the armoring, we need to spread the armoring out to form a cone. For in order to this to take place. Yeah, that looks good. Now you can either do two things. This method where you put the gland onto the cable first and tighten it, or the preferred method, especially for cables of up to about 25 mil, is to tighten one part of the gland into the closure and then insert the cable to it. I'll show you now. So here we have our components of our gland and what we can do, we can take our gland body, insert it through the banjo, through our enclosure and we can then tighten it using the lock ring like so. Once we've done that, using our grips, we can now just give the gland a tighten. As you can see, one pair of grips, I'm holding the lock nut, and the second pair of grips, I'm tightening up the gland body. Now we can insert our pre-prepared cable into the gland. And because this has been tightened up previously, we can now tighten the locking nut, which is acting as a kind of a clamp, like so. Now we're able to tighten up the locking nut to the gland body, 
She's clamping onto the arm ring. We've got a, a good sound connection, the arm ring to the gland, which is important given that in effect, the arm ring is protecting the inner conductors and therefore is this exposed conductive part that needs to be at the same potential as earth. And if that's not, if that's not achieved through the metal, the enclosure, then is why we have the banjo where you're able to nut and bolt the banjo through the enclosure and put a lug on an earthing conductor and bond it down to earth. All that's left to do now is to slip the shroud over the gland, providing extra protection against the elements such as corrosion. And in our next video, we're gonna be looking at some testing. Thank you very much.